ladies and gentlemen you are very much welcome to this presentation and today we are going to look at drilling fluid chemicals and their applications my name is Abel Simon I'm a student at Macquarie University doing petroleum geoscience and production please don't forget to subscribe to this channel before we continue and this video has been sponsored by oil pool UG So our outline for this discussion is one, we are going to do an introduction, then we are going to look at number two, the roles of drilling fluids, then three, we are going to look at the types and constituents of drilling fluids, then four, we are going to look at the properties of drilling fluids, then five, we are going to look at the specific drilling fluid chemicals, then six, we are going to do a conclusion, then seven, we are going to look at the different references which are used in this discussion. So, in our introduction, drill, a drilling fluid is any fluid that is used in a drilling operation in which that fluid is saturated or pumped from the surface down the drill string. And we know the drill string is composed of the drill pipe and the drill collar, as well as the drill bit and through the drill through the bit and back to the surface via the annulus. Or in simple terms, a drilling fluid can be referred to as drilling. Mud. So any fluid that aids in the production, removal, cutting from the bore or in the earth during in a drilling operation is known as a drilling fluid. So for example, in this diagram, you can see very well that yeah, this is a drilling mud, which is being analyzed in the laboratory by geoscientists. So we are going to look at the well saturation system. The well saturation system, as you can see from this diagram, is composed of components like such as the mud pump, we have a discharge line, we have a stand pipe, and we have a rotary hose, we have a swivel which is connected to the rotary hose via the goose neck. Then we have a kelly, then we have a drill pipe, then we have drill collars, then we have a drill bit here, the annulus being the space between the drill string and the, the walls of the well bore. Then also we have the mud return line, then we have a shell shaker, then we have a mud bit, then we have a mud suction line, then we have the reserve bit. And also now show you this this figure shows the drilling mass saturation system. So the system begins from the mud pump which is the mud pump which is this a pump which it draws sorry for that let's go back a little bit a little bit rush here the mud pump because the mud pump sucks or draws mud from the mud pit through the mud suction line and therefore discharges this through into the stand like which you can see here, and then through that the mud will travel through the rotary hose, then the mud will later travel to the swivel, through the kelly here, then through the drill pipe, drill collar, then out through the nozzle of the drill bit. And the main purpose of using drilling fluid or the drilling mud during any Drilling operation is such that to remove drill cuttings during the drilling operation. So that's the well saturation system. Then after that, now the mud after it is under high pressure, it will be now returned through the mud return line to the shell shaker. In the shell shaker, now the mud becomes separated into both two forms. We have the cuttings, then we have the fluids. The fluids can be reused while the solids can be removed and taken to the laboratory by geoscientists for further petrographic analysis. And we can use the samples to infer the physical and chemical properties of the subsurface, including even the reservoirs we have for our basins in the subsurface. Well, well, I mean, 
So yeah, we're going to look at the roles of drilling fluids. One one of the roles of the drilling fluid is the removal of drill cuttings from the bore hole. This one involves efficient removal of drill cutting through the annular space from the bit and bore hole. Why? You have to remove the cuttings. The moment the drill bit cut through the rocks in the subsurface to create a surface area which allows cutting of another formation, the cuttings must be effectively and efficiently removed by relay fluid and also the annular space needs to be clean. And you observe that removal of the drilling cut or remove removal of drilling cuttings largely depends on the annular velocity, which must be greater than the slit velocity of the cuttings in order to move up the well to the annular. What is the annular velocity? Is the velocity at which the fluid is traveling through the annulars of the well bore. Then the slip velocity is the rate at which it cutting set up through a moving fluid. So here for effective removal of drill cuttings, we observe that the annular velocity must be higher than or greater than the slip velocity such that the cuttings can easily be suspended and removed. So slip, slip, slip velocity depends on the size, shape and density of cutting. It also depends on the viscous and density of the drilling fluid. So in order to overcome the slip velocity, you have to back up the annular velocity and also you have to use a drilling fluid of relatively higher viscosity and density to ensure suspension and increasing the buoyancy of the fluid such that the, the cuttings tend to float in the drilling fluid during the drilling operation and results into the effective removal of those drill cuttings from the subsurface. So note that viscosity of drilling fluids increases when movement decreases. Why? Because in the drilling fluid, as when that's why the annular velocity has to be always kept high, such that the fluid will always remain to retain its liquid or liquid nature. Because if the velocity is reduced, the drilling fluid tends to like solidify or develop like a gel nature whereby that was a gelification where it tends to attain a solid form and that is not good at all during any drilling operation first of all it can result into the drill pipe and the entire drill string getting stuck in the well bore and that can even cause the abandoning of a given well which is being drilled so viscosity influences the carrying capacity of drilling fluids in that increase in viscosity causes increase in the carrying capacity while increasing density of the drilling fluid also increases the carrying capacity since it has a buoyant effect on the cutting particles so density and viscosity are very important factors during any drilling operation if you have to ensure the appropriate viscosity and density of a drilling fluid is set and how can you have influence viscosity you can now that one you have to use additives so in case of water based maps you can use additives such as benzoate and barite to give you the right viscosity and density to, ca to carry your cuttings out of the well bone so to Balancing the formation power pressure. Rocks and power fluids experience pressure arising from the rocks overlying them as well as the earth movements. True. You observe that in the subsurface, the deeper you go, rocks which are buried deeper experience greater overburden pressure compared to rocks which are shallow buried, implying that overburden pressure increases with increasing depth of burial, meaning if you have a shallower reservoir, it will experience less overburden pressure compared to a deeply buried reservoir. So, the deeper your reservoir, the greater is the power pressure that you need to counterbalance when you're doing any drilling 
operation and this can be done by in, by improving the density viscosity and the entire flow properties of your drilling fluid and also the weight of the drilling fluid that you inject into the subsurface is this sufficient enough to counterbalance the formation pressure and prevent a kick or a blowout from occurring during the drilling operation so drilling fluids in the bore all exert hydrostatic pressure that is proportional to the density of the drilling fluid as well as the depth of the oil above pressure controls the flow of gas oil or water from the rock pores ends leading to well stability so to, in order to ensure a well